Howdy. Sit down for a minute. Well, I thought I'd give you all the results, some further results, rather, of my uh, modular backstop system. Once again, using the uh, Staples economy storage box. Front of this, so I'd cut a piece of cardboard to take on the back, the top to pack this the back. But anyhow, I got, got, got that all done. I wanted to show you. This is the piece that was over I use piece, halves of pizza boxes trimmed to fit the bottom of the box and replace a big hole in, 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 in the bottom of the box itself and then a tray inside and then put trays of, of junk mail, catalog, etc. inside and layer after layer of these, these tray, filled trays or modules. And I will go through that in a minute. Anyway, that's this is the, the cardboard that was on the outside of the pellets first, or as it goes through the target, whatever. I also use it for uh, when I'm using when I'm doing the chronograph numbers. Now this this is the part I cut the fifth in the bottom of the box itself, which turned on the side is now the face. This is the, this is in, is in the bottom of the box behind this. Okay. And this is the tray that was set inside the bottom before I start using other trays full of junk mail or modules stacked up and up on top of that as you'll see one more time here. Wanted to make sure I'm getting this clear. And the pellets don't penetrate as far. And if you're getting, cut, getting the catalog and another the mag magazine shot up pretty bad, I took them off. We have it in place. You can see the paper gets stuck to it after the pellets going through there. Anyway. And here's the part that actually faces the bottom of the box, which, as I said, is the, the face of the backstop okay, on the inside. I never showed you guys those before, but that's the part that gets yeah, that gets uh, replaced the most. So without further, further ado, I'll explain the rest of it now. And here is the first layer or module on the bottom. You can see that uh, one of the muscle heads didn't make it this time. And he was behind uh, the, the county phone book. Scratch one. And here's where I used the colored pencil to trace the hole in the bottom of the box where the fascia, as you can see here. I, re I replaced that part. That's sandwiched in between two pieces of cardboard, which I'm using one and a half inch Gorilla Tape here to tape back in. Nice fresh piece. And taped on the outside as well. And replacing module one. That goes on the bottom. And module two went right, right back in on top of that since it was still in, in good condition. And module three, which was untouched this time. So you just stack them back up in there. And here, uh, two pizza box halves as module backing. And a third one, that's a, another view here, so you can kind of see how I put them together in there. And here, a third pizza box, half, is the third layer of module backing. And the first two one-inch pieces of hard styrofoam insulation board, I got taped together, all ready to go. Bullet holes at the bottom this time. And the third and fourth layer going back in. And uh, one of the magazines and the, the phone book got shot up. In the bottom is now turned upside down in the back and then tape the backing back in place with the one and a half inch masking tape. Ditto on the fascia here. Cut another pizza box. Kind of like the pizza eyeball, huh? <laughs> and then here it is across the room all set up. 
And here is my target portfolio. I see my, my shot targets in. Uh, my little homage to old Hulahan and Big Chuck from the 60s, where they made fun of certain brands to, to make, make it laughable. And here I decide to show some of my new rifles mixed up with the vintage ones. And uh, 160 on the left, Guide Hawk in the middle, and Hot Sound Striker 1000X on the right. Here you have the Winchester 1400CS Benjamin NPXL 725, and new Remington 725 VTR on the right. Here is my collection of old uh, Crossmans, 160 on top, and some 760s. And a 66AB Power Master in the middle there. And make note of this one. This guy has a lot of new old stock parts. Pretty simple, huh? Good way to use up pizza boxes and jump now. Put it to constructive use. And I got that, that third pizza box in the, in the back. You know, on top of the stack, another one before I put those four one inch pieces of uh, hardened styrofoam insulation board in there, and then take that cardboard over the back and flip it over and take another piece, cut the thick the bottom of the box, which is again now the face. So it's got to go through, it's got to go through three pieces, three, three pizza box cardboards before it gets to the all oh, the stuff is the stuff that it's filled with, which is pretty dense. So even the the H and N silver points I use to take the place of the hearts, which are a lot more expensive, by the way, but also weigh the same 24.38 grain as the heart. In place of them flatten out real nice until they hit other pellets and stuff as they get filled as it gets filled up, then they get mangled and everything. It's hard to tell what they really are. But, um, and they didn't make it as far in. They were making it in maybe eight or ten inches before, and now they didn't, most of them didn't make it through the second module. So that's pretty good. You can see if I can, if I can go all the way through that stuff, and I had two of them, two of them did. I don't know what they were, the minimum a couple of months, or, or King 25s maybe. But anywho, it's I think I finally got this got this thing set, set up pretty good to where you could you could shoot it in the house when you say you got room to do it ten yards in the basement or you're just using it as a backstop for the chronograph. That's that's a lot safer now. So that's it for this time. Good Lord willing the creeks don't rise, we'll see you again.